in today's presentation i would like to share how we are transforming our company into weather data services and content services company so also i would like to share how we are leveraging technologies like aws react mongodb redis and the rabbit mq and, and various other technologies and also uh, the data services platform architecture uh, and uh, various tools and the technologies using for the data services platform and also what are the top 10 technical and technology issues which we faced and how we solved it and um, uh, raja who is uh, here is going to present uh, some of the uh, uh, technology issues which we had and how we have solved them using various technologies. So, at a weather company, we have four focus areas. One is uh, cable, our flagship product is Weather Channel. And in the case of digital, we have weather.com, Weather Underground, and, the, and the IntelliCast. And also, we have a focus area B2 to B to C, primarily we are very active uh, in <coughs> media and um, uh, uh, automobile as well as uh, uh, energy and, and aviation. And we have another focus area is uh, B to B, is a business to uh, business, uh, business. And primarily we provide various professional services uh, pertaining to weather and we will help uh, companies in terms of improving their, uh, their bottom lines as well as improving the efficiencies. And also we help various governments, especially in the Middle East and the Far East, to set up the weather systems for their countries. And uh, we have done a lot of work with the various countries to set up the uh, weather systems in their countries. And uh, we have uh, 154 million unique consumers and we are number one most distributed cable network in the nation and we have around 100 million app downloads and we are the second most uh, downloaded iApp and we have around 61 million unique users on our web platform and around 47 million unique users on our uh, cable platform. So, uh, but most of the people uh, don't know that we also power 500 plus uh, uh, broadcast channels and also uh, we support around 500,000 flights per day by providing uh, various embedded forecasting systems and also providing various weather services. And we serve 85% of major US airlines and also we are the world's leading energy forecaster and we provide weather services for 300 uh, power trading uh, clients. And we are very growing very strong in the insurance sector and we provide weather services to seven, seven of the 10 PNC insurance customers. So weather is changing. For example, if you see in 2012, 2012 was the hottest uh, in the record history of the US and around 9.2 million acres were charred and third highest in, in 13 years. In July 2012, 61% of the country was in the drought conditions. So we keep track of all these changes and we use various analytics, uh, analytic platforms to we go back the history of more than 100, 200 years, whatever is the recorded history, we have all the data and we do various analytics on top of that. And as the weather is changing, so the, uh, our, the IT infrastructure also has to change. And also as the more uh, 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 po uh, data capture points are coming in, into the environment, so we are, in fact, uh, there's a lot of data capture points. And in fact, we are going to increase around 1,400%. There's too many data points. As we're building the new systems, we are going to ingest a lot of new data points. And also, we are increasing the data velocity. Previously, we used to do every 30 minutes, 40 minutes. 
So we will be doing on demand. As yes, the people will ask for the forecast, we are going to provide on demand forecast on the weather services. And also our video content uh, has increased 100% and our uh, social content and user generated content has increased 500% and also the uh, TV feeds, we are in, right now we have one feed going out of our uh, infrastructure, we are going to increase to, to seven feeds. So with all these changes from the infrastructure perspective, we are consolidating 13 data centers to four data centers and we are planning to move our workloads, 75% of our workloads to infrastructure as service uh, 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 in, uh, to platforms and also we are building a grid which is basically uh, whatever services which, which we are building, they are cloud neutral. So we are building a semantic layer, abstraction layer and uh, irrespective of the cloud provider, we should be able to easily move from one cloud provider to the other cloud, cloud provider. And also we are building or modifying around 575 data services APIs and we are consolidating, we have right now 20 data uh, platforms Data services platform, we are consolidating to one data services platform, what we are calling a Sun platform, storage utility network platform. And we are doing a lot of uh, enhancements to the corporate systems to, so that those uh, systems will, will align to the transformation what we are planning to do. And uh, from the weather company's core, we have three spheres of competency. One is science. We have a large number of weather scientists and their main job is uh, to build the new weather models and tweak the existing weather models. So that involves real hardcore physics, chemistry and math, a lot of differential calculus, equations, you know, they are experts in that area. So uh, these scientists, their uh, main job is uh, get various uh, data inputs from various places and they build the new weather models and they tweak the weather models and they generate the uh, weather predictions in terms of a, a grid to gridded formats. I will explain a little bit more detail how we do that. So the most important thing from the weather uh, business is, if you work any other businesses, it's more of uh, textual data, you know, it's alphanumeric data. Whereas in the case of weather data, we have 70% of our data is not text, it's all images in PNG format, or GRIB2 format, NetCDF format, which is mostly binary data. So our challenges are different. So how do we read these binary files in a fast manner? Because uh, that's the only the way, best way to compact lots of data in, into, uh, into uh, one file. So whenever we are doing these mathematical computations, so we read these binary files and compute the uh, various, predict uh, various predictions. So one of the spheres of competence is science. Second one is the technology. So we have a large form of the, uh, the forecasting form, the, the weather forecasting form. So all these, uh, uh, these models will run on that platform. So one of the core competencies is how we can run these models with humongous data. It's terabytes and terabytes of data. We have to run every five minutes, 10 minutes, lots of data will be flowing in. So we need to build infrastructure where we can run these models quicker and provide almost near real-time predictions to various applications and to various uh, consumers. And once these uh, predictions and these, uh, these models are run uh, and they produce uh, data, then we need to um, serve, store and serve and distribute this data to various uh, consumers and to various uh, APIs uh, and as well as uh, we are also meshing this data with the consumer data and providing the uh, consumer behavior, how consumer behavior changes with the weather uh, patterns. So we provide these type of analytics and services to various our customers. So in this presentation, primarily I'll be talking about data and data services. So other spheres I'll, I'll not be touching. So primarily this uh, presentation is how, what is our, um, uh, as yes, going forward, what is our strategy for, to provide the data services? And also we want to monetize these data services so the metering, throttling also becomes very, very important. And also we have to store the historical data. Uh, that's where React, uh, we are heavily using React 
to uh, store these uh, terabytes of historical data. And also, we are using React for replicating between East Coast, uh, be between the East uh, AWS to the West Coast AWS. So um, before I get into uh, architecture, just wanted to quickly go through some of the use cases so that you will understand uh, what uh, these data services, who are the primary users of that. First is if you take insurance. So we help the insurance companies to maximize the premium rates and minimize the clients. Some of the uh, uh, data services we provide is tornado and flood forecasts. So whenever all this weather data is uh, sometimes they ask for the point data. And sometimes we have to give a gridded data, a, a, a grid data, or we have to convert into uh, PNG files, and we have to uh, provide it real time so that they can superimpose on the Google Maps or the Bing. Uh, so our output is not also uh, it's not, it's also not a textual data. So our inputs and outputs are not a hundred percent textual. Um, so the other one is the wind energy. Uh, this sector is directly impacted by weather. So uh, we are planning to integrate with the PPC, production planning and control systems, and the preventive maintenance. So uh, in terms of the data services, we would like to, uh, we are planning to provide wind speed forecasts and the historical wind speeds. And the other major sector is the, is the retail. And um, uh, as you guys know, the 40% of, 30 to 40% of our GDP is impacted by weather. And the retail sector is one of the uh, very important sector is uh, uh, impacted by weather. So our plan is to integrate with their uh, supply chain management. And we are planning to provide data in terms of precipitation forecast, temperature forecast, and extreme weather forecast. If any tornado or anything is coming, all these extreme weather forecasts we want to integrate with the, uh, with the retail industry. And the media. So uh, we uh, serve almost 500 uh, uh, broadcast channels. We provide the, whatever the content required to run the media companies and energy exchange. And energy is traded in the stock exchange and we provide to these traders in real time uh, uh, the current conditions and the, and the forecast. Every minute and every second we push the data uh, to these guys. So energy sector is another important sector. And, and the uh, ad targeting, I don't know how many guys uh, you worked on the ad exchanges. For example, if you open uh, a web page, if there's an impression comes, so there is an ad exchange. For example, Google has DFPP. They decide within, uh, in terms of the latency, it should be less than 70 uh, milliseconds uh, latest. Whenever you open a web page, based on the business criteria and whatever the inventory they have, they decide what advertisement has to be displayed on the website. So our idea is we are planning to build our own ad, ad exchange. And also, we all uh, know that uh, uh, whether if it's, a very cold, if it's a very cold conditions, then it may be more effective to serve maybe sweaters or the soup, you know, those type of advertisements. So our plan is, before we uh, uh, Google uh, ad exchange intersects the traffic, we want to intersect the traffic before, and we will serve based on the inventory whatever we have. So here, our requirements for the data services is less than 10 milliseconds. So we have implemented uh, this, uh, 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 this, this data service. So especially in the case of any bidding, uh, it's very important, the latency becomes very, very important. Sometimes five milliseconds, the requirements, 10 milliseconds. So the issue is how you use the cloud computing and after that provide these type of latencies. I think that becomes very challenging. So we have solved, we have solved this problem. So ad yeah, targeting is another very important area and uh, we want to uh, serve ads effectively and uh, based on weather conditions. If the weather conditions are normal, then, then we will hand over it to another uh, bidding engine. And also mobile apps. This is another area, very interesting area. Uh, and we are working with uh, some uh, game, uh, 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 game developers. So what they want to do is they want to uh, change the game experience depending upon the weather conditions. So we will be providing real-time data to the uh, game apps 
so that they can serve the, the, the experience of the game, they will change in, in, uh, dynamically based on the weather conditions. And also bidding of the uh, cabs. This is a, we are working with two, three companies based on the weather conditions, either the passengers or the cab drivers, they can bid what, uh, what is going to be the fare. And also we, we are combining the traffic conditions and the weather conditions together so that you know, those guys can decide what is the best way to bid the fares. So this is another um, uh, use case. And the governments, uh, you know, we are working with, with, with a lot of government agencies to implement, uh, implement the, and hospitality. This is another area. Uh, most of the hospitality industries, they know that their room rates and occupancy is impacted by weather, but they, their revenue systems or the price, uh, pricing systems, they don't have any idea of the weather. So we are planning to integrate with their revenue systems so that uh, they can determine the uh, room rates in real time. They can change the, uh, change the room rates real time. So, uh, so like this, we, we have identified a lot of use cases and we are building the data services so that uh, to serve all these customers. So we are expecting to start with, uh, uh, we are expecting at least one billion requests per day and we are expecting that this will grow to at least 30 to 40 billion within a couple of months. So, uh, so, uh, so the data services platform, as I was explaining before, uh, we take uh, inputs from various places, satellite data, radar data, and, and uh, uh, lightning data. So all this data comes in various uh, shapes, sizes, or formats in various ways. So we have uh, developed the ingesters depending upon the type of the data we, we have ingesters, and we standardize the data and we put into our, our, our forecasting cluster. And right now our forecasting cluster, it runs on Amazon East Coast. Uh, so, uh, so we push that one, then it generates, every five minutes it generates around 50, 30,000 uh, gridded binary files. Each file would be around 3 MB. So it generates around 60 uh, GB of files every, every and also we, we replicate to around seven different places. There's another computing problem there, how we can um, uh, distribute these many files to one place to another place, and we have used React uh, to solve this distribution problem. And um, so, and also the most important thing is we are number one from the forecasting accuracy in the world. So in fact, we are a couple of points ahead of uh, NWS forecast. So it's all because of that we take lots of inputs. It's not one weather model. We take various weather models and we do a statistical sampling and we uh, do um, a combined forecast uh, among all these models under the data points. So from the architecture perspective, so SUN stands for Storage Utility Network. That is what is our, our data services platform. And it runs on a grid. So we build our own grid platform. So uh, uh, our grid can work with, uh, with the Amazon APIs. It can work with uh, Google Cloud. It can work with, uh, uh, with uh, Terramark. So we build a, a uh, a cloud neutral infrastructure and um, so uh, on top of the grid we run these uh, the sun services that is our data services so from the data services perspective and our top 10 objectives are uh, number one is reduce uh, time to deploy and market because um, whenever any new customer asks for certain amount of data in certain format, and also they want to combine, in, combine whatever the data we have with their data or some other data, so we want to reduce time to deploy. So uh, we, we want to do within a couple of days. If a request comes within a couple of days, we should be able to combine the data and provide the, uh, provide the data service. That's number one. So the reason why we move to uh, uh, cloud computing is uh, not, primarily because of the cost. Cost is very important, but how fast we can uh, do things. I think that is our number one criteria why we move to the cloud. Second one is definitely the cost, the operating costs. Uh, we have, uh, uh, we uh, are getting the operational cost benefit because of various reasons. One uh, uh, reason is because we have our data centers, various people are consolidating the data centers and moving it to the cloud. And second objective is we want to reduce the operating 
cost. And third one is centralized uh, data services. Centralized means it's a, a logical centralization of the, of the data services. And provide the visibility of data access. Is, uh, I think that is a, another thing is whenever you want to monetize the data, then the, uh, then the visibility of data access is very important. So for us, metering, throttling, and authentication are, are very important. So for each request, we want to meter, throttle, and authenticate. And this is all based on the policies. And people wants to, uh, yeah, if they want to uh, subscribe to our data services, you know, they can do uh, self-service the data services or corporate, from corporate to corporate also, you know, they can um, get the access to the data service. But we want to, for each request, whether internal or external, we'll be metering, uh, throttling, and uh, authenticating the, uh, the data services. And also governance process, that's, which is our internal governance process. And we want to serve the world's best uh, forecast. This means what? Whenever a person gets a forecast, we want to personalize that forecast. That forecast is for you, for your latitude and for your longitude. And also we will tell this forecast is valid for how long? So 30 minutes, 20 minutes. So the consuming apps also they know that this uh, forecast is good. If they want to get a new forecast, you know, they can go and get it. And also in our caching systems, also, we are going to expire the data uh, once it reaches the TTL. Um, and, uh, and also, uh, on top of this, I think latency is very important. We have use cases where less than 10 milliseconds, and also certain use cases less than 50 milliseconds, certain use cases 100 milliseconds. So we, have, we are building a platform which can satisfy all these varied, uh, varied use cases. And of course, security is important, but not as important as the banking industry, but you know, we want to secure the data. And um, uh, centralized and scalable architecture, and also consistent rich content. So other thing is we are, stand we are standardizing our APIs and data across uh, data, content, and the, and the media. So uh, we want to have a consistent rich content. So these are some of the objectives of the, of the, uh, the data services platform. And, um, I wanted to show you a, a, some more detailed uh, uh, architecture, but I have been asked not to show because we are patenting some of this uh, uh, architecture still is in the process. So at high level, uh, we have built the ingestion APIs, which are basically Java-based uh, APIs. And so we are using a non-blocking uh, architecture here. So whenever, uh, uh, either the internal or external consumers can push uh, the data to these in ingestion APIs, and these ingestion APIs put uh, the data into a message queue. So we are using RabbitMQ as the message queue. Then we built our, uh, our data processing engines. So we built a very generic data processing engines. And um, so the main job of data processing engine is just to read from the queue and write it to either store or another queue. And each data processing engine, uh, then we build the data cartridges. Suppose if you have a Poland data, and each Poland data, uh, each type of data have a different business logic. So once you uh, uh, insert this module, this cartridge into the, uh, into, into the DPE, then the DPE behaves like uh, a Poland process, a processor. So the reason why we have done it is in terms of the scalability, if you want to scale, we have the same code for any type of data processing. The only difference between one process, other process is the cartridge, depending upon the cartridge which we are, we, we are inserting. So and then the DPE will write to, uh, to the data store. So we are using uh, React for, to store all the archival data. So it, as the data comes in, we archive, plus we put it into the cache database. Redis is our cache type of database. So we are putting into the Redis. And on top of that, we have built the APIs. And uh, so we serve uh, in two, two uh, ways. One is the push mechanism. So as the things changes, we push all the changes to a message queue. And the, our consumers can um, subscribe to the queue. Then they can read, the, read only the changes. And if they have capability of using the APIs, they can uh, use the APIs. And, and uh, the most important thing is the API management for metering, throttling, and authentication. So we built the, uh, uh, the API management on top of the uh, APIs. And uh, 
we serve to um, all the focus, four, five focus areas which I have explained before. And uh, Raja is going to go some more details in terms of some of the, um, uh, these competent computing challenges which we had and we, uh, how we have addressed this. The first one was distributing thousands of gridded binary files to multiple locations across the globe within five minutes. I, I think that is a very big uh, thing. And um, so we used uh, React for this and uh, Raja is going to explain how we have used React and RabbitMQ uh, to use uh, this one. And second one is uh, our base capacity is we want to serve one billion requests. And once we use it for our internal and external, it's going to grow dramatically. And um, I think scalability is, is very important. How do you scale? And also, uh, and also the other thing is we uh, auto scaling is very, very important. And after that, how do we ensure that all the components in the stack can auto scale? Uh, so uh, auto scaling is very important and also metering and authentication, as I said. But whenever you measure things, uh, you are going to slow it down. Uh, so I think that is the very nature. So what we want to do is we want to measure, but we want to minimize uh, the latency induced by the measurement. So that is another uh, technical challenge because if you have 10 milliseconds, if you want to do a API, and if you use any API management tools available in the market, they are taking at least 15 milliseconds. So then how can we use API management tool? So what are the things we have to do? So that within one millisecond, I, I, I can measure meter and throttle. So I think that becomes very, very challenging. And I think in, uh, at this scale, there are not many companies uh, in the world doing, you know, 20, 30 billion requests per day. And at the same time, you want to monetize, meter, throttle, and authenticate. That's a very, very big technical challenge. And also process multiple terabytes of data every day and, in, and ensure business continuity. And, uh, and also we have to leverage data caching. Whenever you induce the, uh, introduce the data caching, there are other issues in terms of how do we know that, and of that, well, if a, if, a AP, if a person, hit, uh, if the application hits uh, for the data, is going from the cache, is not coming to the origin, how do you measure? Then how do you uh, link back? Some uh, requests are going from the cache, some requests are coming from the uh, origin, then how do you ensure that you're counting everything? So that becomes another technical challenge. And store petabytes of historical data. So uh, we have hundreds of e uh, years worth of data, then we are still collecting lots of data. Then how do you store? And meshing the weather data with the consumer data. So uh, for example, if you want to measure that uh, uh, particular weather conditions will cause which SKU or which item in the store or for a particular uh, chain of, of retail, there's an impact. So how uh, weather conditions will Im impact the sales and the inventory levels. So to do this, then you have to mesh with the humongous data coming from the various consumers and, uh, and whatever the data we have, then how, how we are going, that is another technical cha challenge. And also build the flexible in ingestion platform. I think this is another big thing, even though it looks very simple, because when we are dealing with, uh, say for example, US, we have, as I said, we got hundreds of varieties of this one. You can build ingestion for each variety. But when you're dealing with the international, suppose if you're working with uh, countries like uh, Vietnam or China, uh, then they have their own formats, their own languages. Then uh, how do you uh, build data ingestion and standardize and how do you uh, present it back? And at the same time, I, I have certain operation budget, or OPEX budget, I have, to, I have to manage that. So doing all these things and managing the OPEX budget, these are the top 10 computing challenges. So Raja, uh, who is managing our systems engineering team, and he built the infrastructure on the grid computing, which land and sitting in the last row, he built our grid uh, uh, for our company. So he's built, uh, Raja built the, uh, uh, all the systems on top of the grid. So Raja is going to uh, share some of uh, these challenges, how we solved it. Raja. Can everyone hear me? Okay, so uh, as Satish stated, my name is Raja Silvaraj. 
uh, I lead the data and systems engineering groups at the weather company. So uh, as Satish stated, the weather company is, is basically trying to um, you know, uh, reinvent itself in, in addition to being the best forecasting company in the world, uh, in addition to being the, uh, the second most downloaded app in the iPad uh, or the, uh, the iTunes market. Uh, and also being the um, uh, I mean, the best in you know whatever we do in terms of weather, so uh, it's trying to tune itself into like more as a data service platform and also a content distribution you know platform oriented company um, you know for weather weather based content. Um, and that brought a lot of technical challenges because you know um, when you think about weather, I mean you have you have petabytes of data. I mean you know you have to. Uh, store them, and then you should have the ability to crunch it, and then you know, and you should be able to distribute that data, uh, not only to external consumers, uh, to internal consumers. In because you know, when Satish went over the brands, you know, we have a lot of popular brands that we have to serve internally. So um, that brings a lot of challenges. So I'm going to discuss. Uh, I mean, you know, the, the computing challenges that Satish talked about. I'm going to discuss a little uh, into into each of these challenges and how we solve that, and. Um, uh, we, would, we would have loved to uh, show the architecture, exact architecture of how we did this, but uh, and as they stated, that we are in the process of patenting some of this stuff. So uh, maybe in the next AWS conference, we'll be able to show you exactly you know, how we went through this. Uh, but in general, um, if, you, if you think about this, what we do is uh, we have an ingest API that actually uh, gets data from different sources. So uh, I mean, if you're a lifestyle data provider, and if you want to, uh, you know, ingest data into our platform, you can you send the data to the to the ingest uh, nodes, and then we queue that uh, into our queuing platform. And then we have a general purpose process engine that actually reads or dequeues these messages and writes into different data stores. And then uh, we have our external, uh, you know, API machines that reads these data uh, from these different data stores. Uh, in addition to caching, and then you know, we distribute the data. Uh, we also deliver data through push-based feeds, uh, I mean, you know, through queuing methodologies. Uh, so that's the general architecture. Um, so the first question that we had answered was, uh, what's going to be our compute platform? And um, uh, that was, uh, it was an easy decision because, you know, um, we wanted to be cloud independent, and, you know, we have an internal team that will land right behind, I mean, on the last seat. Uh, you know, they have built a crowd, uh, cloud abstraction platform. So. Uh, so that we can focus on building the best data distribution platform in the world. So we built our platform on top of the grid platform so that we don't have to worry about, you know, which cloud provider that we are on. Uh, but right now, since this is an AWS conference, um, you know, uh, we are on Amazon, so, you know, so, so that everybody knows. <laughs> uh, so the next, the next step, after we designed the computing platform, the next question was, uh, you know, what do we want to store the data? Because if you really think about it, uh, we discussed about petabytes of storage. I mean, you know, so it's not that easy to, uh, you know, decide, okay, we want to choose a relational database and we want to store the data there, right? I mean, it's not that easy. So uh, we basically sat down and said, like, okay, so what do we want in that data store? Uh, you know, we wanted it to be very highly available. That goes without saying. I mean, you know, um, we wanted it to be uh, easily manageable. Um, having um, run the database operations for weather.com, uh, if your database is not easily manageable, it's, 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 it becomes a nightmare. I mean, you know, you have to spend... Uh, nights and weekends, sometimes in the operation center. So, and uh, you wanted it to be uh, um, uh, consistent in performance. And uh, Werner, in fact, in his keynote, you know, he tried to reiterate that point. You know, you want consistent performance. And consistent performance not at like, you know, 1,000 requests or 500 requests. You want a consistent performance at uh, a billion requests, you know, at 5 billion requests, 10 billion requests. You want the same kind of latency or same, you know, latency when, when, you're, when you're scaling at that level. And, um, you know, we wanted our data to be replicated into multiple, uh, you know, data centers so that we don't have data loss. Uh, and we wanted, you know, infinite capacity. So, um, so after we, you know, you know, documented all these requirements, uh, what we realized was one size doesn't fit, you know, because we get data uh, in different formats. I mean, Satish went through, uh, you know, those different, you know, formats. We have images, we have satellite data, radar data. Uh, we have text files, you know, ranging from you know two KB to you know gigabytes. Uh, so we store different types of data in different technologies. Um, so uh, we store our React data. Sorry, we store our uh, uh, our, our historical weather data, uh, point-based weather data in React. 
And um, we store all our transient weather data. Uh, because if you really think about it, weather data is actually transient. You know, um, observation 30 minutes uh, is basically like you know, the changes. It changes constantly. So we, we store the transient weather data uh, in Redis. Uh, and also, we do a lot of caching on top of Redis. Uh, we use um, uh, Cassandra right now for our uh, image and radar and you know, raster kind of kinds of data. Um, we are using Hadoop for our log crunching. Uh, I mean, we have so many different digital platforms. So we get a lot of log files into our platforms. So, so we use Hadoop to crunch those log files to get, you know, um, you know to do some BI on top of it. Um, we entered into Redshift for our uh, uh, weather analytics platform. And I'll, I have another slide that talks a little bit about Redshift and, you know, what we do with Redshift uh, there. And uh, right now, all this is built on top of... Um, uh, our grid platform, which is actually on top of AWS. So, uh, so uh, whatever we do is always on multiple regions uh, in Amazon uh, because we always wanted to be highly available. Um, in fact, we have plans to be available on multiple regions. Uh, we currently have presence uh, in three regions uh, because, you know, as I stated, we wanted to have really, you know, high nine uh, availability, like, you know, four or five nines availability. Uh, we parallelly ingest data into multiple regions. We store data into multiple regions. We distribute data from multiple regions so that, you know, we are always up and running. If you really think about it, uh, when there's a severe weather event, uh, if that's happening, you know, uh, not only you want your, um, you know, uh, website or data distribution platform to be highly available, uh, you also need to distribute that, data, distribute that data very quickly. Because if a tornado is going through, right, you have uh, five, five to, uh, you know, five milliseconds to 30 milliseconds, or even like, you know, 30, uh, 30 seconds to transmit that data to the end user, saying that, look, there is a tornado coming on your way. So, it's, you know, we take that very seriously because, you know, we are in the business of saving lives. The only area we do cross, uh, you know, data center to data center replication is, uh, is with React. Uh, and the reason being, we wanted to have consistent data uh, for our historical weather data you know, across all the regions. For the rest of the data, we parallelly ingest data into multiple regions, and we distribute data you know, from those regions. Um, the, uh, the, the, the challenge with the cross uh, data center to data center replication with uh, React is that you've got to have React in a public subnet, and uh, you know, because every node has to communicate with every other node. Uh, so you got to take security very seriously. I mean, you know, because you don't want to allow anybody else to communicate with those no with those uh, nodes, and uh, those nodes also need to be need to have elastic IP addresses. Uh, but overall, I mean, you know, we've been able to work make it work. It's working fine. Uh, we are doing cross data center to data center replication right now with React. Um, so six months back when we started this project, um, the data scientists, or sorry, the weather scientists. And the meteorologist came to us because we are the you know, data distribution team and said that, look, guys, we get data from different sources. Uh, we are building the next generation you know, weather systems. Uh, we get data from different sources, but we wanted to distribute this, we want to distribute this data across uh, multiple regions. And when I say regions, you, know, you can think about data centers or you know, Amazon regions. We want to distribute this data across multiple regions and we want to do the actual weather algorithms on those regions and then distribute the data to the world because we wanted to do um, you know, localized uh, data that is relevant to the end user. Um, and not only that, they said that, they said like, okay, not only that, we want to transfer uh, 27,000 files, each two megs in size, and Satish mentioned about this. So the total came to around like 60 gigs. And, uh, they also said that we have to transfer it within a 15-minute SLA, right? So from the minute the files get generated, we have to transfer all those files within 15 minutes to six regions in the world, for example. So that became a very big challenge to, to the data distribution platform. So we came up with a way to do this. So what we did was we actually, um, and this is only part of the architecture, as I stated, I, we cannot reveal the overall architecture, just revealing the file distribution architecture. What we did was we actually queued the messages, uh, the metadata of the files into queues. Uh, we use RabbitMQ, which is an open source queuing, AM, uh, open source queuing uh, soft, uh, based on AMQ, we product protocol, sorry. 
And then uh, we actually stored the files on the HTTP server, and we wrote a custom component called uh, Data Process Engine that basically listens on the queue and dequeues the messages. Um, and we use React uh, to store the actual files. Uh, so I, I forgot to mention one point. So if we miss uh, a single file in the, data, in, the, in the file distribution, so the 27,000 files, if we miss one file in a run, that run is useless because the, the forecasting systems that's running on the other side, on the, on the extreme right, if that doesn't get one file of these 27,000 files, that run is useless. They cannot basically, they just have to dis, you know, discard that run. So reliability and fault tolerance became very critical to us. So the reason why I mentioned that is because the DPEs, when they dequeue these files, they write it into React. And since React keeps multiple copies of files, we default the, the end value is three. So we were able to get um, you know, um, redundancy of our files uh, using React. Uh, not only that, we were able to transfer uh, 50 gigs or 60 gigs of data within 15 minutes. We were able to write that uh, into React. Uh, we use BitCast backend. Uh, so I mean, you know, we, we think that it's, we solved some significant engineering challenges. Uh, so just to go a little bit into deeper details, we use provision IOPS, uh, you know, so that we could scale uh, our writes. Um, and uh, we also have highly uh, fault tolerance mechanisms. If a message fails uh, or if a file, you know, we were not able to write it into React, we actually requeue the file so that another data process engine can pick up that message or, or the actual file so that we don't lose files in our data distribution. Uh, it's, 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 it's running fine. We actually launched this. Um, a couple of days back, and it's being used uh, initially by our internal consumers. So, and we'll be launching it um, to our broader internal consumers later. Uh, so, as I mentioned before, I wanted to touch, uh, uh, dwell a little bit into uh, weather analytics. So, Satish mentioned this: weather impacts 30% of the GDP of US. So, I mean, retail, insurance, aviation. Energy, I mean, you think about any industry, uh, I mean, you know, weather plays a part. So uh, what we wanted to, I mean, you know, we, we came up with a new um, uh, division called weather effects to actually mesh up weather and uh, sales data to find patterns, you know, what, how weather data impacts sales, right? I mean, you know, what the consumers are doing based on weather data. So we um, get data from our uh, partners, um, into S3, and we push uh, billions and billions of weather data into Redshift. And, and then on, in Redshift, we do all the uh, mashups. I mean, we do, uh, we do a lot of analytics, and then we come up with patterns to find out uh, you know, what's happening. I mean, you know, how is sales getting impacted with weather? Uh, that's what we are doing on the weather analytics platform. Um, uh, right now, we have, uh, around, we have more, than, uh, more than 30 billion rows. Uh, you know, we have terabytes and terabytes of data under Redshift. Uh, it seems to be working fine. Uh, I mean, that's it from us. I mean, you know, um, those are our email addresses. Um, I, don't, I don't tweet. I don't have time to tweet. So <laughs> uh, that seems to be the trend. I don't do Facebook as well. So, uh, but if you, want to, if you have any questions, if you want to reach out to us, uh, I mean, those are our email addresses. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you know, we have, I don't know how long we have. You have 15 minutes. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to ask. We'll be more than happy to answer the questions. Yes. I'm sure. Thanks.